So today we did a personal branding shoot with my buddy John here, and we went through the same planning process that I go through with all of my clients. I usually just don't trick any of them into sitting in front of this camera and talking about it with me to share with you. So let's go over some of the things that we did to plan your own session. So what are three words? Three. You cannot see that I'm holding up three fingers. What are three words that define your brand? For example, some companies, uh, if you do organic produce, it might be clean, fresh, sustainable, natural. Maybe you're bold, cutting edge, artistic. There's a ton of different ways to describe your brand. How do you want people to perceive you? Yeah, so um, this is interesting because it was both the branding for my business and also the branding for my dating brand. And it really coincided because I really do find authenticity in all things is valuable. And so my three words are cheerful, charitable, confident. Why? So uh, that's a really good question. So in terms of in terms of both dating and in business, the people that I'm looking to attract are the type of people that are independently happy. I'm constantly looking for people who want to join me on my journey and whether that journey is helping them become successful in business or that journey is in dating. I found that if I can be cheerful and give off a cheerful vibe, I am generally tending to attract those types of people that are also cheerful, that tend to, that tend to find it really easy to be happy in life regardless of circumstances because whether it's in business or dating, we all come across a lot of chasms and I wanna make sure I'm around people who are independently happy. In terms of confident, um, in the type of work I do, it's super important that people trust that I have the knowledge, skills, talents, whatever it takes in order to help them reach their goals. And so I need to give off, give off a confident vibe. And finally, in terms of charitable, um, I was really, really lucky to have a dad who was a window to God's love and a mirror to other people of what was best in them. And so in terms of, again, who I want to attract, I am constantly and consistently concerned that other people like the version of themselves they are when they're around me. And so I really, really find it valuable to give off a charitable vibe. Yeah. And you're thinking, well, why would you have the same values or the same three words for both your business and your personal? Because they're the exact same thing. We are the same in life as we are in business. There's really no separation. Unless you're creating a business entity that operates on its own independently from you, that's an entirely different conversation. But our personal brand professionally is also our personal brand personally. And as soon as we try and create separate personas for those, that's a lot to manage and you're lying to somebody and it's just not sustainable. But it's really important to know why they want to be those things because if they say, well, I think cutting edge, two words, I know, is one of my words. If you think you want to be that because it's marketable and because you think the audience wants to see that and it's not really you, it's gonna be pretty tough to pull that off. Yeah, I, I totally agree and the, the whole idea is, again, I think, authenticity is what people are drawn to these days. And so the more you can be your whole self throughout all the different aspects of your life and your business, I think you tend to attract those types of people around you who, who you want to be around. Yeah. So number two, who are you talking to in, in both or is it the same person? Yeah. So, uh, it kind of is, uh, for very different reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but in both, I'm looking again for people who want to join me on the journey. Um, in general, these are curious people. They're people who want to find uh, greater purpose, meaning in life. They're people who are looking to enjoy the journey. There are growth oriented people um, and generally people who want to make a contribution in the world. So in business, in marketing, it doesn't matter if you think you have the most amazing polished message, sales letter, whatever. If you don't know who you're talking to, it's not going to land. Um, very, very unlikely that it's not going to land. It's like you're speaking one language to someone who doesn't speak that language. You have to figure out who that person is so that you know how to actually communicate to them. And as you said, make sure that you're aligned on that same path or you're forcing things and that's just not going to work. And one of the reasons... I love doing this discovery process with my clients is because it really provides clarity. And a lot of the new entrepreneurs I work with, 
really haven't thought about any of this stuff and they've been struggling, but now having clarity on these points of, oh, I have no idea who I'm even talking to, what their values are, what are they looking for in me, both personally or and or professionally, and it gives you a better game plan moving forward. I'm sure you've never experienced that in all of your uh, your business consulting ventures. Yeah, I I constantly find this to be hilarious where people create a product or a service without first deciding who that product or service is going to be designed for. And so then they try to reverse engineer the marketing after already having created the solution and then trying to define a problem that that solution solves. Yeah. It, spoiler alert, it doesn't. <laughs> so what is important to the person that you're speaking to? Yeah. My audience in both areas honestly has a, a high level of integrity and a high level of stewardship. So in general, they're talented, smart, fun outgoing personalities who want to use their gifts and talents in order to serve other people. Um, I really find value in being around, again, the, that sort of growth-oriented person that wants to contribute positively to the world. Yeah. So again, knowing who you want to show up as, who you're showing up for, and what's important to them, it's all about alignment and, and making sure that your message is going to land. Because we can take stunning photos of, of anybody, but Again, if it doesn't communicate who you are, it's not being received by the right people, or they just don't care, then it's all kind of a waste of time and money. And that's the last thing any of us want. Yeah. So one of the more tactical questions that I have to ask, and this will ultimately decide how effective the photos are I can create, how are these going to be used? Because a LinkedIn profile picture is an entirely different shape and size than hero images across the top of a website, for example. Also, if your website's already designed and you need to be facing left or facing right, which is probably backwards for you viewing this video right now, that all matters. And so generally producing a list of everywhere the photos are going to go, or at least everywhere you're aware of now, is super helpful because if you need text to appear somewhere in the frame, I need to shoot so there's room for that. Is it just a logo? Do you want a paragraph of text? The more information, the better. So dating profile wise, that seems pretty straightforward, right? Yeah. So just dating apps, pretty standard. They're all the same size and shape. That's an easy one. But the professional photos. Yeah, so for my professional photos, this is a full rebrand. So building a new website, I'm gonna be using it on all social media channels that we'll be using, which are Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, <clears throat> um, TikTok, and also YouTube. So a YouTube banner on the top as well as the image. Um, and then, yeah, just a lot of different website assets. So the hero banner um, and images throughout the copy and all that other fun stuff. Yeah, one of the best I guess sort of answers, replies I've ever got from this was from a, a theater owner in San Francisco. I've done marketing photos for them to sell tickets to shows for almost a decade now. And he comes through and gives me actual pixel dimensions and we hash out a shot list together. It's like, we need this acrobat with these dimensions facing this way because the logo is gonna go here. Our posters are already designed for this. So we need negative space in this number of pixels and we have this much room for content with a gap above. That is super helpful because we can frame up the exact shot. I don't have to crop it later. Not that I'm lazy, but we know what we're after. We can just go get it as opposed to shooting a ton of content with huge margins all the way around so that we can crop, which is generally the case. And if you don't want to go that far, you're like, I don't even know what a Facebook banner image needs to look like. You can just Google Facebook banner pixel dimensions or even get close to that verbiage. LinkedIn uh, profile size is 200 by 200. I know these because I've been doing this a while, but they will just tell you. And then you can put together that list of, I need a cool shot with my building in the background for Facebook. So it's this shape and doing a little bit of homework like that. Plus I'm going to fill in the gaps. we make sure we get everything we need. And we did your shoot today. Did it feel awkward? Uh, yes. Answer honestly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm not particularly photogenic. So I think anytime people are taking pictures of me, it is 
not my strong suit, but it also felt like the shots that we were getting were consistently authentic to who I am. I wasn't wearing clothes that I wouldn't otherwise wear. I wasn't standing in super awkward poses. I wasn't in super awkward locations. So as far as it could be authentic in terms of, I don't normally have people take pictures of me. It was the most authentic photo shoot I've done. Yeah. And when people say they are not photogenic, it's a hundred percent on the photographer because anyone can take photos of bad angles and bad lighting and not like the way they look in photos, but that's our job as a photographer because we can take great photos of literally anyone. So if you're like, Oh man, I am totally not photogenic. I can't do this. You just haven't found the right photographer. And if you're like, well, how do I find the right photographer? Well, you could go to MikeLloydStudios.com and book a call with me and I'd be happy to chat with you about doing your own shoot. And if maybe you don't want to fly to California, we also travel because we're filming this in Houston right now. You could check out this other video. I'm going to link down below on how to find a photographer near you. So bonus hack, which I feel is the most effective way to find a local photographer who's going to take great photos of you. Subscribe to this channel. Make sure you like this video because that totally changes the game in helping you find a photographer. You are amazing. See you inside.